Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P520 PC and we'll be installing these upgrades to make a great budget video editing and gaming PC. Specifically, we have an Intel Xeon W-2135 CPU with six cores and 12 threads. And this is a Founders Edition NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics card with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. What I'll be doing is demonstrating how to install these upgrades and then we'll be testing with video rendering and gaming performance. So first up, we'll have to open this thing up and we'll talk about what's already inside. And here's the inside of the PC in all its workstation glory. I have another video on the P520 that came out just before this one, so if you feel like I'm missing something, these two videos are kind of meant to work in tandem with each other. So the CPU that came with the system and that's currently installed is a Intel Xeon W-2125, a 4-core and 8-thread CPU. Let's just take a look at some quick and dirty stats from techpowerup.com. So we see the original CPU, four cores and eight threads, has a TDP of 120 watts, 4.0 gigahertz base frequency with a 4.5 gigahertz boost speed. And with the 2135 CPU, there's six cores and 12 threads, a TDP of 140 watts, base frequency, which is a little bit lower at 3.7 gigahertz, but the boost speed is the same at 4.5. So I'm hoping the lower base frequency of the 2135 is compensated by the increasing cores and threads. And just to quickly go over some of the other hardware installed into the PC, there's currently 64 gigabytes of Samsung branded DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM. And we'll be replacing this NVIDIA Quadro P4000 GPU that has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Although the RTX 2080 will outperform this GPU in many tasks and especially for gaming, don't discount the P4000. Go back and check out my other video. This card actually has a lot of life in it and a lot of power to give. And just to make a note, we have a Delta Electronics 80 Plus Platinum certified 690 watt PSU, so that's plenty of power for the 2080. And to accommodate for that power, we have not only one, but two six pin to eight pin PCIe connectors. And I already have an SSD installed, but I'll lift up the heatsink after we take out the graphics card just to get a look at it. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the CPU first. All right, so I decided to move this thing over to a different workstation. I think maybe we can start with removing the graphics card for easier access. So this looks like a tool-free process. Everything that can be altered looks like it's marked by one of these red labels. So let's pull this up. Pull down on this red tab. And I think the card should just pull out. Just note that like any other motherboard, there is a little tab here that you'll have to press down in order to release the graphics card from the PCIe lane. Outside of that, I think this thing's gonna come right out. We'll take the PCIe plug out first. There we go, easy as that. Now to remove the CPU cooler from the motherboard, you'll just need a Phillips head screwdriver and we'll take out the four screws. This thermal paste actually looks pretty fresh. I suppose if maybe the PC wasn't being used, there'd be no heat to cause the thermal paste to dry up. Either way, let's wipe it off. And it looks like to release the CPU from the tray, we just need to push down on these two levers. All right, time to install the new CPU. It looks like our arrow is facing towards the top of the motherboard this time. And for the thermal paste, we'll be using Arctic MX-4. While we're here, let's take a look at the two available NVMe slots for storage. They're right underneath this heatsink here. You'll need that Phillips head screwdriver again. And this little lever can just be turned to the side and I think it's on a spring. Right here underneath this thermal pad, we have a Team Group MP33 512 GB NVMe solid state drive. As you can see, we have an additional M.2 slot right here. All right, now it's time to install the RTX 2080. I didn't really go into it before, but the reason why I chose a 20 series RTX card is not only because the power supply will be able to handle it, but the PCIe lanes in the P520 are PCIe 3.0 speeds. So I thought I may as well pick a graphics card that is also offering PCIe 3.0 speeds. Not that it really matters, you could install something with PCIe 4.0. And 
And since we're right beside a monitor at this testing station, let's plug everything in and cross our fingers that everything's going to be okay. The green LED on the graphics card lit up right away and the fan started spinning, but it took about a minute for anything to come up on display, but thankfully it did. And there's our CPU. So clearly everything is working right now. I'm going to get this thing set up on my other test bench and we're going to get to the gaming and video rendering results. All right, so the system is looking great. I've got DaVinci Resolve 18.6 loaded up and I have my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage. As I expected, using DaVinci Resolve with this hardware works very well. But what I'm really interested in is how well this will compare to the four core eight thread Xeon CPU when it comes to rendering. So let's give it a go. Looks like we're accessing those boost clock speeds on the CPU. All right, so the render completed in nine minutes and 49 seconds. And over here from my other video with the four core eight thread Xeon CPU, we can see that that one completed in 13 and 45 seconds. So at least of this one test, we have a four minute difference. That may not seem like a lot, but I'm taking it as a win. Next up in Handbrake, we have the same eight minute Fortnite clip. Let's see how long the video encoding takes. So according to our log here, we finished in three minutes, which is one and a half minutes shorter than the four core eight thread Xeon CPU. Again, that may not sound like a lot, but for larger files and continuous encoding, I really think it would make a solid difference. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of what kind of performance you can expect if you exchange these CPUs. To be honest, I think it's totally worth it. The 6 core 12 thread Xeon W-2135 only costs about $38 Canadian. That's really a small investment. Maybe you can refer to my previous video and if you're looking for some more hardware information or feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll lead you in the right direction. Definitely let me know if you're running upgrades in your ThinkStation P520. I'd really like to hear how it's going. And I know there's going to be a remarkable difference in gaming between this GPU and this GPU. So I'm not going to say too much more. I'm just going to segue into the gameplay footage and have that carry out the rest of the video. So have a great day and may the computer gods bestow upon you great performance and zero troubleshooting.